All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a bright and sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Alison Williams, who is over in New Jersey. Bright and sunny there, Alison? Yes, it is. Excellent, excellent. And Alison is business coach for um, solo law firm owners at Law Firm Mentor. And what we are going to, or mentor, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is effective intake for law firms. And what do we mean by that? Well, we mean phone sales, basically. Um, okay, so uh, Alison, um, Let's start off by, here's the thing that you, uh, that sometimes when people are in businesses like a law firm or something, um, people don't always realize that, that, you know, they're in sales as much as anybody else because they have to go and find clients and bring in clients and et cetera. And it's, it's often kind of, you know, it's hard sometimes for people in professions like that to see themselves as salespeople as well, right? Or to have, or even to think that they have salespeople in their business because they see it in a very different way. So um, how do you help, how do you help law firms and uh, how do you help them actually develop a, a good sales culture? Yeah, so uh, I, I think what you said is the perfect, uh, the, the perfect start to this, which is that law firm owners and professional services firms really mm -hmm. don't think of themselves as being in business. They think of themselves yeah. as having a profession where they happen mm -hmm. to make money. And the yeah. problem with that is, of course, that if you're not thinking about your business as a business and you're not directing your activity toward converting more people that come through the door, and ensuring that every person that touches your law firm is in a pipeline to be able to drive them from first point of contact to schedule an appointment to being a converted client, then you miss opportunities that are relatively simple and straightforward to be able to get more people in without having to spend more money. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And, and it's, a, it's a kind of, it, it's an interesting phenomenon the way that people like to look at themselves differently. But when you put yourself on the consumer side, I mean, you know you're going to be paying money over to somebody for a service that they're providing, and you want to make sure that they can convince you that they are the best person to provide this service to you, which is just a sales, uh, a, a, a sales process. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that we, we teach here at Law Firm Mentor is about how to take the sales uh, stigma out of your communication. So when we talk about things like intake, which is the phone sales aspect yeah. of it, one of the things that people really struggle with is how do I convince this person that they should be scheduling with me? And how do I convince this person to pay for scheduling with me? And I tell them all the time that you really have to focus on the person and not yourself. So instead mm -hmm. of focusing on how to convince somebody Recognize that sales is not about convincing somebody of anything, right? People make decisions for their own reasons. They happen to yep. connect with what you say and justify it based on what you've said to them. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, they're deciding based on their own internal, internal barometer. So it's really your job in the intake stage to gather enough information to find out what the point of urgency is. And once you know why they are in distress, why they are calling your office, why it's important to them to solve the problem, you can very quickly direct them to the solution, which is coming into the office. The, the solution is not buying you yet, right? Mm -hmm. If they haven't met you yet, they haven't had the consultation yet, you're not trying to sell them on a few thousand dollars over the phone. You're trying to sell them on the prospect of getting their problem solved by coming into the office or coming into Zoom, right? We're now in 2020, yeah. so a lot of people doing Zoom. Uh, but, you know, to connect with you in a deeper conversation about the problem to see if you can ultimately sell them the solution that they need. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with that. And I think it's funny because we often emphasize like the, the first rule of communication, which is people come to, um, people trust conclusions that they come to themselves above anything you can, you can tell them. So as you just outlined there, your job is to help that person come to the conclusion that it's a good idea to come in and meet with you. Right. And, you know, people will oftentimes, you know, one of the things that I, I also infuse into our uh, scripting when we help lawyers with what to say on the phone is, is the idea that you want the person to not just come to the conclusion on their own, but you want them to be very uh, emotionally connected to that conclusion. Yeah. So you ask them questions that get them to identify not just the nature of their problem, but how significant the problem is. And you reaffirm they're making the right decision for reaching out to you. You know, so you start to infuse your conversation with a lot of support. 
supportive statements such as, you know, I understand, you know, I understand how you feel. You know, we encounter people like uh, that, in, that experience this type of situation all the time. And what we found is that first point of relief, that first point of getting your problem solved is coming in, having the substantive conversation, really getting deep into the problem and getting the solution that you need. And when you say that, you essentially are addressing the objection of why should I do this now and or what it's going to cost by virtue of doing the, the traditional feel felt found version of objection uh, response, which is, you know, identify that you understand how they feel, you know, so you liken them to being the right party, you don't disagree mm -hmm. with them, you uh, get them to, you know, acknowledge or you acknowledge uh, that others have felt the same way. So you create that that connection with uh, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs of security, yeah. being like other people, being in connection with other people in your belief system. And then ultimately what they found when they solved the problem in the way that you'd like them to, meaning they ultimately did overcome that objection, they did get to the point of sale, and you address that without actually saying to a person, let me address your objection for mm -hmm. ABC. So you're being very proactive in engaging them and you're getting them to overcome their internal objections before they even voice them so that they make the decision right then and there to hire. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I love the process that you've outlined there. And I think the other thing to, for people to bear in mind is in an area like this, it is a very emotional um, process for, for buyers often in, in a situation like this. Because let's face it, I mean, normally when, when we are interacting with a law firm, uh, you know, none of us, none of us, kind of wake up in the morning and say, "Oh, you know, I'd love to." You know, what I'd love to do today is I'd love to talk to a lawyer, a lawyer or a law firm, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not really what happened. So there's, you're already starting off with probably some trepidation and emotion in the process on the buyer side. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the first, um, the first person that you speak to at a law firm is often what determines the person's desire to go forward. Because mm -hmm. you know, when you're greeted with a sense of empathy, warmth, compassion, kindness, and urgency, meaning they're going to address you as soon as you have a need, the person connects with the idea that the person on the other phone, on the other end of the phone, is someone that cares enough about them to solve the problem and is going to be able to do that. Versus you know, having an answering service or kind of a distilled, you know, law firm without having the name of the firm identified and kind of just, you know, pulling them through somewhat of a, of a trajectory that's very uh, name, rank, serial number, data box checking experience. And you have to move out of that if you're going to sell in the professional services realm, because, you know, people at the end of the day, they're, they're in distress when they're coming to you. So you, you've definitely got to address that distress to get them to a decision making place that they can, they can move forward. Yeah, and and the the other part of that is when people are in in a distress or emotional state, their their um, their senses are heightened already, right? So you can tell when if you're sitting on the phone, you can tell if you're suddenly being put through some kind of qualification or checklist process, and that's not what you need at that point. To, to what you were saying, that's not what you, you want somebody to at least you know have some empathy about the fact that you are a little distressed. Yes. I mean, think about it. We all have been through that experience where I'll, I'll kind of use the, my personal favorite example is the bank, right? You call the mm -hmm. bank and you say, hi, I have a problem with my account. Uh, I'd like to speak to someone about that. And the person on the phone, often in another country, is reading mm -hmm. from a script and they say, thank you for calling the such and such bank. What is your problem? And you just mm -hmm. told them what the problem was. Yeah. So, right. So yeah. clearly, had they been listening, they could have said, oh, you have a problem with your account. Let me help you but they're in a very robotic state of just going through the checklist. And then you tell them again, my problem is with my account. I need to speak to someone. And they say, great, let me see if I can help you with that. Mm -hmm. And then they start asking you questions and you feel that you are being pulled through a process where someone doesn't really care. They're just trying to get you off the phone and on to the next person or, you know, kind of, you know, yield you over to something other than their phone line. Cause there's probably some time pressure for them to get you off the phone so they can take mm -hmm. enough calls. And people feel that, they respond to that, and they usually say, you know, mm, this is not that great. Sometimes they'll still book the call, you know, depending on how desperate they are, but it's, right. much, it's gonna be much harder to get that person to buy at the point of the consultation when you do that. Yeah, no, absolutely. So when you, when you, walk, when you work with um, law firms, right, obviously that is, that tip of the spear, that first point of contact is so critical. And, and it's probably something that a lot of law firms don't realize. So it's, you have to go through obviously an, an education process to say something like, yeah, this isn't, you don't want to stick some junior qualification person on the line because that's actually self-defeating. 
Yeah, well, you know, there's a there's a process that we actually teach here at Law Firm Mentor to our law firm owners as to how to train up your intake professional. Mm -hmm. Because for a lot of people, for a lot of law firms, intake is a lower level, lower compensation sure. role. So yeah. you want to make sure that the people that are doing it are not just there for the paycheck, but that they're either seeing it as an opportunity for them to learn about the law or perhaps get a career pathway that uh, serves them, maybe determine if this is something they want to do long term. But ultimately, you want to get that person in and you want to train them. And a lot of law firm owners don't train. They simply give the script, give some general instruction, and then are surprised when the phone is either not ringing or not booking appointments. And, and I tell people all and the there's time, massive and, there's, and that position turns over rapidly. Right? Yeah. You know, um, I tell people, don't expect intake for more than two years. Like two years, two and a half years on the high end is, is definitely as much as you're going to get out of it. But that doesn't mean that you don't train the person really mm -hmm. well. And in fact, if you do a good job with your training and you record your training of your professional, then the next person who comes in, you have that previously recorded training to help the next person systematize that role and get them get them converting sooner rather than later. So what are some of the key uh, traits or characteristics or skills that you look for in a good intake person? So I always tell people, it was a perfect acronym for this, you know, you need a piece of pie when you are looking for an intake person. That means you need a personable, inquisitive employee. Personable, obviously, people like, no, you know, people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. So yeah. that no like, and trust factor needs to be there. Do they have a pleasant sounding voice? Are they somebody that relates well? Are they able to be conversational? Do they naturally express empathy in the course of engaging? If somebody calls up and says, my husband just killed my sister, I don't know what to do, I want a divorce, you don't say, all right, let me get you scheduled. You say, oh my God, I'm so sorry to hear that, right? Yeah. And if it's not an instinct for them, that's a real problem. Mm -hmm. Then you need inquisitiveness. And this is not necessarily being inquisitive about the legal problem. It really is about being inquisitive about the person. So mm -hmm. not just why is the person calling and what do they want, but how is the person's problem impacting them in their present circumstances? Because people make decisions out of their urgency. So you're always going to be listening for what it is that matters to that person. And not every person is going to emote when they get on the phone. Some people, they're mm -hmm. going to call very distressed, crying, emotional. Other people, are very gonna, they're going to call very matter of fact. And they're going to say, this is what I need. This is when I need it. Let me get it scheduled. And if you don't still find out enough information about that person that your salesperson, your consulting attorney or your consulting non-attorney yeah. can use to be able to create instant rapport and be able to take that, that sales conversation to conversion, you're not helping. So you're getting the person scheduled, but all you're doing is collecting a relatively modest fee for an hour or two of time rather than leading to what could be tens of thousands of dollars for your business. So it's important that that person have an inquisitive uh, aspect of who they are. And then of course, as an employee, you want that person to know that their job is principally not just doing the job, but serving those that, uh, mm -hmm. that, that write their checks. So that means they have to have the right mindset for being an employee in your office. Yeah, it, it's interesting just picking up on what you said there about the, uh, I mean, when you have the emotional person or the robust person, it's obviously, it can be a little easier. You have to obviously direct the conversation in order to get the information you want and that. But when you do have that um, maybe low reactor, that uh, that more um, more reserved person, it's very easy to just go with that and sort of say, okay, this is, they're, just, they're just a net kind of person. I'll just get what I can here and move on. But to your point is, um, that's where the real skill comes in and drawing out somebody like that. Right. And, you know, it's, it's a lot easier when you think about it as a process of trying to find information mm -hmm. rather than I'm trying to make a friend or I'm trying yeah. to connect with a person. Really think about it like I am trying to find out what matters to this person. So if the person calls up and says, I want to schedule an appointment, the first question that naturally comes up is why, what is the problem? How can we help you? But once you get that out of them, you want to find out enough about the story and you want to guide the story. So what I tell people about guiding the story is that this is really the subtle difference between interrupting and interjecting. So interrupting, the person does not feel heard because you're cutting them off if they are telling a story and you're getting what you need or not what you need. When you're interjecting, you're going to stop when the person is saying something that you need to really dial in mm -hmm. on. You're going to say their name to reorient them. And then you're going to do that pregnant pause. And that pregnant pause then allows you to either speed up your tone if they are speaking slowly or slow down your tone if they're speaking quickly. And that alteration in the pace of your speech 
changes the tenor and tone of the communication. So oftentimes a person who's kind of just monotone, name, rank, serial number, they're going through the motions. Mm -hmm. When you start zipping along after you have interjected and gotten them to stop for a moment, you can often get them to change the energy with which they're relaying information that allows you to tell, are they energized over how bad the problem is or are they energized about how excited they are to solve the problem because people make decisions out of avoiding pain or seeking pleasure. So you have to know what matters to the person on the phone in order to get to that place of sale. Yeah, no, and I love what you're saying about using that um, pregnant pause, because I do think that's an area where a lot of people fall down, especially salespeople, is they get very intimidated by having any kind of gaps or silence in a conversation. Yeah, I always say, you know, if you if you get to a point where somebody is being silent, you really need to let it sit there for a minute, mm -hmm. you know, because you know, a lot of times either somebody is what you have said is resonating with them. So they're mulling yeah. it over or what they have said is shocking them. So a lot of times when people call law firms, the first time that they are really telling someone what their problem is, why they are impacted by it, what, what fears they have, what concerns they have, that is oftentimes the first time that they're really giving permission to share about the problem without the fear of humiliation, without the fear of judgment. And if you don't let the person have that moment with you at the time you're speaking to them about it, you miss a golden opportunity. They still go back into those emotions that they had when they came in, that fear, that judgment, that worry, that concern. If you allow them that moment, that in and of itself can be what causes them to say, this is the company I wanna work with because I feel heard, I feel accepted, and I feel that I'm going to get my problem solved without judgment or consternation. Because a lot of people fear judgment, and they fear what's going to happen if other people know about their problem. And, it, and it's fascinating, yeah, the thing that you said there, because um, if you think about it, oftentimes that phone call, it may be the first time that that person is actually telling this, as you said, telling their story to somebody else. So it's almost like they're listening to the story for the first time themselves. Yeah. Yeah, they're listening and they're hearing, oh, wow, I can't believe I let my, my situation get that bad. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And so that's why I think it's, 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 um, it's absolutely, you're right, absolutely critical that, that, you, um, that you facilitate that rather than, because it's, there's oftentimes, unfortunately, people interrupt at the wrong moment. And then you, and then you redirect this, the train of thought of the, of the other person and you may never be able to get it back. Yeah. And it's very true. And, you know, intake is not the lengthiest sales conversation, right? Mm -hmm. the, the lengthier yeah. sales conversation will be when they come in. But that first point of contact, that first time that they're heard, the first time that they're expressing, the first time that someone is going to help them, the very first time that they get help beyond speaking to the receptionist to get over to the intake department is that intake professional who gets them the solution that they need to get somebody to talk to them about the legal problem. So there's a, there's a lot of power in that role. And if you use it effectively, you can make massive growth for a law firm. Massive growth. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Well, listen, this has been, this has been great, Alison, and some fantastic, uh, fantastic advice uh, for those in the legal industry and looking at your intake. I think there's, uh, obviously, Michelle has a, has a wealth of, of insight and wisdom to share with you. All of uh, Alison, sorry, did I say Michelle? Alison's information will be in the, in the bio below here. But before we go, Alison, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so uh, everyone, I am Allison Williams, the law firm mentor, and I tell people that Law Firm Mentor is a business coaching service for solo and small law firm attorneys. We help them to grow their revenues, crush chaos in business, and make more money. And making more money is about profit. Growing your revenues is, a, is pretty obvious. It's about marketing and sales. And so the sales component includes both intake and legal consultations, and we teach you how to convert both of those processes into a sales conversation so that without much ado about much, about anything, you can uh, start to get more people into your law firm just through changing the way that you communicate with them in the sales process. Yeah, okay, that's fantastic. I love that crush the chaos, crush the chaos. That could be a, that could be a, a that could be a, a motto for us all <laughs> every day right now. <laughs> right, especially in 2020, right? <laughs> exactly, especially in 2020, we'll use that motto for the year. Um, listen, as we know, it's a very competitive space. Uh, you know, um, in the legal area and stuff. So, I mean, setting yourself up for success in the way, uh, in the way Alison has outlined is, is critical. So I would absolutely encourage you to check out uh, Alison's services. 
All right, my name is John Golden, Says Pop Online, Says Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview soon. Thank you.